Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 14, Solving More Systems. And so we're just going to continue what we've been doing the last couple of days by solving more systems of equations. Just good practice. And it does take a lot of repetition here just to kind of get the, get the hang of it and get used to it. And you'll continue to see things like this on into, you know, up until ninth grade and 10th grade as well. So just get used to it and just get comfortable doing it. Um, so here we go. First of all, it says solve these equations without, without writing anything down. We can look real quick and say, okay, for example here, x is 5 and y equals x minus 7. So in a sense, if we were to take this right here, 5, and substitute it in the place of x, we end up with 5 minus 7, and that becomes a minus 2, right, for what y would equal there, y equals minus 2. Here we have two values of y, y equals 4 and y equals x plus 1. And so without worrying about too much, we can kind of see if y is 4, then we know that this combination here has to add up to also equal 4, which tells us that x is going to be equal to the difference between 4 and 3, which is simply 1. Okay, and over here, there's really nothing we can do. They gave us the x value and the y value, and we're okay with that, no problem, okay? And so, just looking at it, we can look and do some substitution and recognize some patterns in the structure of these equations to help us solve for x and y. So here are a lot of systems of equations in section two. It says, without solving, identify three systems you think would be the least difficult to solve, and three you think would be the most difficult, and then be prepared to explain your reasoning for which might be the least, which might be the most, okay? Then it says to choose four to solve that you wanna do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead real quick, and I'm gonna solve A, and I'm gonna solve E, and I'm gonna solve J, okay? And those are the three I'm gonna work through on my paper here down below. So let's take a look at A first of all. With A, um, I recognize that it already gave me the value of y. This is one of my easy ones, okay? Y equals four. So that's pretty easy. I got that one set there. All that's left is to find the value of x. So to do that, x is gonna be equal to negative five times the value of y. I just have to replace the y with a four. So I put a four right there and I add six. So I have five times four is negative 20 plus six. Gives me a negative 14 is what x is equal to. And so that was pretty straightforward, negative 14 comma four. So I chose that as one of my easy ones because they already gave me a value of y. I would say b is similar, x is a little similar, and I have a, 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 um, a fraction there. Those are all pretty similar ones there because they're pretty straightforward, right? I would probably say that, that that's not too bad, this one right here is not too bad right there, and that one's not too bad, right? It's just one value, you're just replacing that one value. Those are the easy ones I would probably choose from. When I look at e, e is a little bit more in the middle here. I have negative 3x minus 5, and I'm going to set it equal to 4x plus 30. Remember, I'm going to do that because of the transitive property. It's going to allow me to set them equal to each other there. So I'm going to add 3x over here, add 3x over there. That gives me 7x. I'm going to subtract 30 to get that over there. So 30 and 30 and five make a negative 35. We'll divide by seven and negative 35 divided by seven is negative five and that becomes my x answer. Now I can take that value there and plug it in one of my other equations. So four times negative five, I'm gonna use this one right there, plus 30. This becomes negative 20 plus 30, which is simply equal to 10, which is my value of y. So this solution becomes negative five 10 for letter E. And one more I said I was going to do is J. And so for J, we can see here that in this case, we have a little bit of a setup to do, don't we? We have Y equals 3X plus 2, and then 2X plus Y equals 47. We don't have an X equals or a Y equals. It's set up a little bit differently, isn't it? Okay. So, but what I can do is I can use, again, still just the substitution method here is what we call it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 2x plus y equals 47. That's my first equation, right? And instead of writing a y here, let's do this. I'm gonna erase the y, and I'm gonna write that instead of y right there. So instead of writing y, I know that y equals 3x plus 2. 
Okay, so now I can combine my like terms. We have 5x plus 2 equals 47. Subtract 2 and we have 45 equals 5x. Divide by 5 and x equals 9. Now I can plug that back into my equation here. y equals 3 times 9 plus 2. And we have 27 plus 2, which is 29, is the value of y. So we can say 9 comma 29 is a solution for that one there. So we just use some substitution to put something I did know in the place of something that I didn't know right there. That's the idea with that one there. Okay? So in section 3, it says 5 does not equal 7. Wow, what a surprise, huh? Tyler was looking at the system of equations, x plus y equals 5 and x plus y equals 7. He said, just looking at the system, I can see it has no solution. If you add two numbers, that sum can't be equal to two different numbers. Do you agree with Tyler? And we'd probably say, hmm, I would probably have to agree with Tyler, right? Let's think about it this way. If I was to graph this out like so, and do a graph of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Okay, and here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 7, 3, and 1. Okay, let's think about numbers that add up to equal 5. I could have 0 and 5, there's 1. I could have 1 and 4, and there's 1. I can have 2 and 3, I can have 3 and 2, I can have 4 and 1, and I can have also 0 and 5. Those all equal 5. Now for 7, I could have 0 and 7. I can have one and six, I can have two and five, I can have three and four, I can have four and three, I can have five and two, I can have six and one, I can have seven and zero. For a solution, there needs to be a point of, when we're talking about this, intersection. Do you see any place where these would ever intersect? Any set of numbers, even if I use fractional numbers, would they ever intersect? We would say, no, there's never a solution there because they never intersect. All right, and so today, kind of your summary for today's lesson is we can move things around a little bit by using a little trick or a strategy we call substitution, okay? Substitution, that technique allows us to replace one value with something else, okay? So we take a look at, for example, over here on this summary one here, and we have y equals 2x plus 6. That transitive substitution allows us to put the 2x here in the place of y, to say that 2x plus 6 equals negative 3x minus 4. What are we doing? We're substituting the y value with a y value that's given there. And that's what substitution is about. And that's what we've been doing all along using the transitive property there. So let's take a moment to do your homework and then we'll check it together. Okay, homework for tonight, it says solve more equations. So here we go, we have y equals six x, and then we have four x plus y equals seven. So we're gonna substitute the six x right there for the y. Let's rewrite this again, four x plus y, but y we're gonna say is six x equals seven. So 10 x equals seven, which means x is gonna be equal to seven tenths. We divide both sides by 10. Now from there, can we plug that back in to solve for y? Sure we can. y is gonna be equal to six times seven tenths, that's our value of x, right? And that becomes 42 over 10, which we can reduce down to 21 over five. So my solution ends up being seven tenths comma 21 over five for number one, okay? All right, and that's that one right there. For number two, Again, still using substitution, we're going to plug in 3x right there for y. So we have negative 2 times 3x plus 70, okay? And that all equals x, right? So x equals all of that. So x now equals negative 6x plus 70. We add 6x to both sides, add 6x. So 7x equals 70. Divide by 7, and we find that x equals 10. I'm going to plug that back into our equation. y equals 3 times x, which we said was 10, which becomes 30 for our value of y. 
making our solution 10 comma 30. All right. Which equation, together with y equals negative 1.5x plus 3, makes a system with one solution? One solution. All right, let's take a look here. For A, we have the same exact slope, but a different y-intercept. That's going to cause something like this, right? If we're going down, again, this is not accurate. If this one is here at 3, and it's going down a negative slope there, and that's the same slope but at six, it's gonna be a parallel line like that. It's never gonna meet. There'll be no solution for that one. For this one, negative five X has nothing after it. Well, that means it starts at the origin, right? And it goes that way and again has no solution. It's also parallel because it has the same slope. Number two is interesting because we can see it's not a negative 1.5 we can see it's been multiplied by two, right? Multiplied by two. So if you think about this, y equals negative 1.5x plus three. If we multiply everything here by two, everything by two, you end up with two y equals negative three x plus six. That's the same equation right here which means this is gonna be the identical line, and so it's gonna be an infinite number of solutions, right? It's the same exact line, it's just written a little differently. So that also would not work. Over here, we have two y plus three x equals six. Well, how'd they get that? Well, look, they're adding three x to both sides. Two y plus three x equals six, is what you get when you add 3x and move it from the right side to the left side. It's the same thing, also with infinite number of solutions. Will not work. This next one here, negative 2x plus 3, means I'm starting here at 3, and I'm going down 2, 2 over 1, which means I'm also going up 2 over 1, and we have a graph that would go something like this. Now in this case here, I now have a place where there is one solution, which happens to also be at zero comma three. That would work right there. All right, number four. The system x minus six y equals four and three x minus 18 minus y, 18 y equals four has no solution. It just doesn't work out. Change one constant or coefficient to make a new system with one solution. Okay, so the reason it has no solution here, again, let's take a look here, this is the whole thing right here, if we take a look at this, um, this part has been multiplied by three, okay? So your X and Y is, are exactly the same. Your X and Y are the same, but if your X and Y is the same and that's equal to 12, it's just not gonna quite work out, isn't it? So we wanna have a, an, a one solution. To make a one solution one, what you wanna do is you want to have a different slope, okay? That's the big difference here. It's not so much about having a different number on the end as it's having a different slope. So all we have to do is let's take um, this guy right here, okay? So instead of three X minus 18, we can make that two X minus, um, or sorry, this one here, we can make that two X minus six Y equals four. Once we do that with a new slope, we're gonna have one solution instead of no solution. Okay, if you wanna make an infinite number of solutions, because I've shown before, this is like times three times three. If we multiply that times three, if we did x minus six y equals four, and we multiplied everything by three, shoop, 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 get exactly the same, we'd have three x minus 18 y equals 12. And if we did that, we're gonna end up with the same equation there, okay? And that's because our stuff's all gonna be equal to each other and we're good to go there, okay? 3x minus 18 equals four, yeah, okay. So we change this one right here to 12 and that's gonna work there. So just change that four to a 12 and that's what we would do, okay? Because that'll make them all equal to each other and it reduces down to that part right there. So I change the first one, change the second one, and that's it. So number five, match the graph to the equation that we have here. All right, a couple things I noticed. This is a positive one, it's going up. This is a positive one. This is a negative one. This one is also a negative one. So here's a positive. I have two X plus three. 
So going up and crossing at three, looks like it's gonna be there at A. This is a negative one crossing at three. So I look for a negative one, this one crosses at three. So that's gonna be C. Here's positive two X crossing at negative three, which is right there. So that's gonna be B. And here's negative crossing at negative three, that's gonna be D right there. So look at your slope. Is it positive, is it negative? And then look at your Y intercept to decide where it crosses. Those are the two key things you have to do. And from that, you can see which one matches there. And finally, number six, here are two points. What is the slope, the line in between them? To find the slope, we're gonna do our Y, usually the second Y, minus the other Y, seven minus four, divided by the X minus the other X. Just keep the order the same and you'll be fine. Seven minus four is three, and one minus the minus three is plus, so we get three fourths there, which matches choice B. I don't need to turn the page to see what the other choices are because they're all wrong. B is the right one. Hope that helps you out, and we will see you next time.